IoT or Internet of Things devices face some of the same challenges that mobile, device face, mobile devices face, but frequently they face them in a more extreme fashion. And there's a lot of interesting engineering that's going on in the IoT space to try to create these devices that can in many ways satisfy constraints that even mobile devices don't face. So let's think about some of them. So, so power, for example. Um, a mobile device, so your smartphone, is energy constrained, it's battery powered, but every night I plug this thing in and it recharges. So it has a relationship with me in which I'm taking care of it. I plug it in so that it can recharge. Um, an IoT device needs to be able to run for long periods unattended. So if I have, if my light bulb is on the internet, I better not have to plug it into charge every night. Um, obviously, a light bulb can charge itself. That's a bad example. If my uh, home security system is on the internet, I better not have to take down all my door sensors every night and plug them into charge. So they need to be able to operate for long periods of time, either on you know batteries, but changing batteries is kind of annoying, or in certain cases, they need to be able to harvest power from the environment. So there's a lot of really interesting work that's gone on into figuring out how to get these devices to collect solar energy, which you can do even indoors, uh, to harvest vibrational energy, and a variety of, to harvest energy from wireless signals. So a lot of cool work in this area in terms of figuring out how these devices are going to actually work. Now, if I have to change the batteries in my smoke detector every couple of years, I'm cool with that, uh, but I don't want to have to change them every few weeks. And if you think about it, Today, maybe my house has 10 IoT devices inside of it. Maybe it's 20 and I'm just missing a few of them. A lot of them are plugged in to power and that's, that's good. But if my home in the future has 2,000 IoT devices in it, the number of the batteries I'm going to have to change every day is going to get to be really, really annoying. And so, you know, we really need to figure out this power part. Um, networking is an, another challenge. So how do these devices connect? Uh, to each other? How do they connect to useful external resources? How do I communicate with them? Um, so, you know, there are, you know, IPv6 is obviously out there. There are standards for low power communication because networking is also connected to power. So if I don't do networking properly, I may consume a lot more power. And the amount of power consumption that's acceptable on a mobile device or on a laptop with something like Wi-Fi is not acceptable on a device that needs to operate for five years on a tiny little battery. So there, there are networking challenges. Uh, interface issues. And this is a really interesting, interesting challenge for IoT devices. These uh, don't have displays. So how do I interact with you know, a smart toaster, a smart light bulb? I mean, how, how do I use that thing? You know, how, how does it interact with me? If it has these wireless capabilities, how do I use those to get it to integrate well into a, a system with other devices? And, and that's sort of you know, another pretty serious challenge that I think um, these uh, systems are facing, which is this idea of integration. So how do I build systems from lots of different IoT devices, from different vendors, doing different things that work well together? So my home security system and my oven. So you know, why would those two devices need to interact? Well, if I have a smart oven with some sort of you know, wireless capabilities, maybe my home security system might want to know the fact that I left that oven on, or maybe it would like to know the fact that the oven is turned on because that means I'm at home or whatever. So there are a lot of different opportunities to combine information from a bunch of different IoT devices together to enable kind of interesting use cases but they have to be able to communicate with each other and they have to be able to integrate with each other. And this is one of the big challenges in the space right now because a lot of times uh, you're in, a, you're in a, a situation where every new IoT device or every new sort of smart device that you get comes with its own interface, its own app, its own web interface, um, and so these devices don't really work very well together. Um, so, you know, and, and then think about, up, you know, so another interesting thing is software updates. Um, and this is another one of the challenges of just being able to run unattended for long periods of time. 
I cannot have to touch this thing. So, you know, if it applies a bad update and then just the whole thing crashes, that can ruin, the, you know, the entire device and can ruin the entire experience for me. Um, you know, if something serious happens to my laptop, I may be able to take it somewhere and have it repaired. But a device that doesn't even have any input-output ports, how is that going to, uh, you know, maintain uh, fresh software over long periods of time? So there are a bunch of new interesting challenges in this space. There's a lot of smart people working on these issues. Um, and to the degree that we can sort out some of these problems, I think we'll see IoT devices become more prevalent and also more useful.